Hey everybody and welcome to today's video. What we're going to look at in this video today is nested if statements in Excel and the newer if s function. Now the if s or the ifs function will allow you to replace nested if statements in many cases. So what we're going to do is look at our sample data and we have an organization that's involved in sales. And when they sell so many units, they offer a discount. So if they sell six, over 6,000 units, they get a 4% discount. And if they sell over 10,000 units, they get a 6% discount. Now we have some order numbers and some units, and we want to calculate the if we want to calculate the discount based on the units. So first we're going to do it using a nested if statement. And then we're going to do it again using the if s function. So let's start with our if statement. And our first thing it looks for in an if statement is a logical test. And remember, a logical test is always going to give you a true or a false result. Now, in this case, we want to say that if our units is greater than 6,000, then we want a discount of 4%. And we also want to say if our units is greater than 10,000, we want a discount to 6%. But the order of these um, logical tests is extremely important. And I'll show you what I mean. We need to start with the highest value first. So our first logical test is going to be if our number of units, which is in our cell here. So if B6 is greater than our 10,000 units, and I'm going to lock in that 10,000 so I can pull that formula down. Then what do we want? Well, if it is, then we want 6%. I'm also going to lock in that cell so I can pull the formula down. Now it's looking for a value if false. So an if statement looks for a logical test. And if it's true, it will return the specific value that you stay for if it's true. And if it's false, it will return a different statement. But in this case, we need to replace the false statement with another if statement. So our, our value if false is another if statement. And again, it's a logical test. So if our units is greater than 6,000, and I'm going to lock that in, the value true that we want is 4%, and I'm going to lock that in. And the value if false, well, in this case, we want zero because there's no discount if the value is false. Now we see we get no discount here. And I'm going to pull this formula down. And I'm going to press F2 to go into edit mode so we can see that we're saying that if our units is greater than 10,000, we want 6%. And in this case, it finds a true result there and gives us the returns the 6% discount. Now you can see that we can place quite a few if statements within if statements. You can place seven if statements within an if statement. So nested if statements can become quite long and quite difficult to read. It's also, as I mentioned, extremely important that you put in the order of the criteria correctly. If we change this formula now, and we press enter, we'll see we only get 4% here. Because what happens is it first says, is the 15,000 greater than 6,000? And in this case, it is true. So it returns the first true, which is 4%, and it never moves on to the second true. So the nested if statement, you have to be very, very careful that you have your order in the right place. And let me just revert that formula back. And now we can look at the new if s function, the ifs function. And the ifs function, first of all, takes a logical test and then a value if true, and then another logical test and a value if true. And it doesn't take a value if false. Again, as with the nested if statements, you need to ensure that you have your criteria, your logical tests in the right order starting with the highest value for the same reason that I just explained to you now. So our first logical test is, is our units greater than the discount level of units? And I'll F4 to lock that in. And if the value is true, we want 6%. I'm going to F4 to lock that in as well. Then it's looking for a logical test too. 
Well, our logical test two is, is our units greater than our first threshold, our lower number of 6,000, and the value of true is going to be our 4% discount. Now it's looking for a third logical test, and we don't have a value if false. So what we can do is put in another logical test to account for this if value is false. And that is if our units is less than or equal to 6,000, then we want zero. Because it's either greater than 10,000 or greater than 6,000 or less than 6,000. It can't be any more than greater than 10,000. 10, that seems to be infinite. So now when we put in our formula and we drag our formula down, so now we see that the correct results have been pulled in and if we F2 to edit this formula we'll see that we have been able to drag it down by using, by locking in our cell references. So that's the nested if statement and the if s function and the if s function is a really really cool function that allows you to rewrite a nested if statement in a less cumbersome way and an easier way to actually read. Now as with any other formula or function if you're going to build long formulas they are going to become hard to read anyway and don't be afraid to break them down into smaller chunks so that you can read them and other people can actually follow them and you use the output from one if s function or if function or nested if statement as a feeder into another one so don't be afraid to break your formulas down where necessary if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There's also a text version of this video available on the exileclub.com. So do hop over there if you have any comments and join in on the discussion over on the blog. Talk to you again soon. Goodbye now.